Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at a free update to the naming toolbox. I've added a new feature which helps with name matching your objects for normal map baking, so let's check it out. So first, if you're not familiar with name matching, basically what it helps you do is in the olden days when we used to bake normal maps, we would have some like overlapping shapes here. Like let's say this cube here is my low poly and this thing behind it is my high poly. And these are kind of just floating right in front of or slightly clipping into the larger object here. And so in the olden times, you would have to take this object and like set a keyframe of it over here and take this object and set a keyframe of it over here and so on and so forth. And because what would happen is when you went to bake your normal map, it would bake everything all together and it would project these guys here onto this here object, which you didn't want. So in more modern bakers, pretty much all bakers at this point, you can actually skip this whole moving of your objects and exporting them and then re-importing them and blah, 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 doing all that stuff. You can actually have them uh, clipping with all types of different objects in the level, and you can name them specifically depending on what your baker accepts. You can name them high and low with kind of a like a naming code, and then this object will ignore this object, and it'll just bake to itself, and this will just bake to itself. And so you can kind of leave your model the way that you would like to model it in a more logical fashion. And so it was requested, somebody wanted me to update the tool. They wanted basically a magic button that said once they kind of put all their stuff in a high or low group, that it would just magically go in and append the correct uh, naming suffix so they didn't actually have to kind of rename it manually. Or even in the renaming tool, it would take like a couple of clicks. They basically just wanted to click one magic button and go, boom, my object is ready to bake. And so now you can see this looks like my high poly. It all looks correct. And here we can clearly see the main issue. See how that circle sphere is projecting onto the other guy? So we're going to fix that with name matching. OK, so the new feature that we actually came here to talk about is called group match. It's this button here. And so what it does is basically, I'm just going to delete that there. It's going to take your selection, and if your selection lives in the high or low group, it's going to put the name on it that you just renamed it to and either add the high or low suffix. So this can save you a ton of time if you have lots of little pieces, especially if you have something like this that has only one low poly for that, but then has a bunch of high polys. So that can be super annoying having to kind of name all those things separately. So the magic here is you only have to type the name in once to get it to go to high or low. So here's the low, and I'm going to put that in low, and then I'm going to grab all these. These are all the highs, and I'm going to put that into high, and we'll just expand that there. And so this guy's the low, so there's only one of it. So what are we going to name this? We're going to call this cube, uh, what is it? Let's say big, and then we'll just go, we'll just manually name it. We'll go low. And we'll click on rename, right? OK, cool. And then these guys we know are all the high. So this is where the tool really saves you time. So we're going to call this cube big, because we know it's going to be the high that matches up with the low. But there's a bunch of them. And so what the person wanted was just a single click button that would take the base name and append high or low, depending on what group it lives in. And you do that by clicking the group match button. So it's going to take this name, cube underscore big. And then if it's in high, it's going to go high. And if it's in low, it's going to go low. So when we click this, you get cube big, high, 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 plus an increment. So it'll work with the name matching. And then just for fun, so if you did have a ton of meshes here, I've just made a bunch of like random spheres just to show you. So like, let's say we put those into the high folder just for a test. So we've got all these random spheres here. And then we're going to take these guys and we'll pretend that these are the lows and we'll put them in the low group. And so if we select all of those, we can do this all in one click. So we would go sphere, whatever, big, doesn't matter. And then click group match. And boom, so you get it all at once in one click. So you can just type the name once, group match it, and then it's magically going to add the high and append the high. And it'll be in the order that you select them. So you can see these came out in a funky order because I selected them in a weird way. So you would normally want to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's going to be sphere here. We'll just change the name, whatever. Try big, doesn't matter. 
and then click the magic button and boom. And then so see, then you get one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, high, low, big, big. So just one click and you can name your whole grouping of objects in the outliner. So pretty cool, save you some time. Okay, so let's quickly do the rest of them here. So the next one is gonna be called cube small. So these are the cube small, so that is the high. So put it in the high group, and that is the low, so we're gonna put it in the low group, and then we just select those, high, low, and group match it, boom, and you get cube high, cube low. So you can do this really fast. So this is medium, so this is the high, so that goes into high, and then this goes into the low. And then this guy and this guy, and it is medium this time medium and same thing group match it and boom so you can name everything all at the same time so it actually saves quite a bit of time now that i'm actually going through this workflow this is cooler than i even remember it being and now we're going to take it over into marmoset and bake it so let's grab the high group and we'll export high and we'll overwrite high yep all good same thing low here we go low overwrite yep cool and so this time when we set up the scene, we're going to do the auto loader, which is way better. Quick loader, sorry. So we're going to make a new baker. This is the way I would normally bake, especially if you're using the name matching stuff. It makes a new baker there. And then in here, all of that looks to be the same as what we did before. No, it looks like we have to reset that. So let's go 16 again. Padding size, extreme all good i want to overwrite this guy yeah i'm sure and then good 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 m-i-k-k -K. cool so now instead of pressing Control i or importing the stuff manually this is the better way to do it you go down to this little quick loader thing here and you say load and you just load the high and boom it loads it in and then see it magically sets up all these groups and see how they're all named correctly and see how each group has a high and a low object already placed in it so you don't have to do this all manually and each one of these groups determines that the thing is going to bake without the intersection for the other thing that's already clipping into it and i'm just going to delete these materials again because they are always annoying me so get rid of that you can see there's our corrupted normal map on there so same thing in the baker in the quick loader, first you load the high, and then you load the low. Okay, and then we've got that, and then that same annoying thing, we're gonna get rid of that, and that, and that. Okay, so we've got a corrupted mess, but check it out here. So we've got our low, and it matches up with our high. So in cube small the group, inside of it, we've got the high and the low, and so that prevents it from intersecting with the other ones. Same with the medium, and with the large, and then with the high. And so what this does is it saves you 1 million hours of work. You don't have to do the uh, stupid exploded mesh thing. You don't have to move objects around. You don't have to worry about objects clipping into other objects that you don't want to. And could you imagine naming this stuff all manually and importing it all manually? I was doing that for a while when I first started using Marmoset because I didn't know about the name matching thing. And then once I knew about it, I was like, oh, man, it's like still a ton of work. You have to name all this crap. So that was actually a really good suggestion uh, that someone sent me on ArtStation to just magically select, you know, the highs and the lows and just have it automatically figure it out based on what group it's in. And you may have noticed that I exported a high file and a low file. This is what I would recommend. I would always recommend exporting a separate FBX with your low polys in it and a separate FBX with your high polys in it. And the reason for doing that is when you go back to do 1 million iterations on your low poly, you don't want to have to export the high poly every time because it's kind of slow. And so if you split it into two files, when you use the quick loader or anything in Marmoset, you only need to update the low file, which takes two seconds to export instead of exporting the high and the low every time. So I've seen a couple of people online, they're like, oh, I just do one file. And uh, I wouldn't recommend that personally. Uh, I think it's just gonna cause you a lot of bugs, but if it doesn't, it's just gonna waste a lot of your own time. Okay, finally, we are ready to bake. Let's do something fun here. So go up to the baker. So you can press Control B or you can hit the little button here. Let me just clear this normal map just in case something wacky is going on here. Okay, there we go. We're back to default. Okay, so let's bake this and then let's apply this. There we go. Okay, I don't know what's happening there. Oh, and we're still showing the high, of course, which is not going to be good. So hide the high. 
OK, cool. So let's just go in here and do that same thing again. We want to increase the cage. So the other cool thing about splitting this up in the name matching system is that you get a cage per asset now. And those cages can clip through one another without affecting one another. So we're going to click on low and see how these guys are like actually kind of in the cage. See, there's already no overlap. And so that's the whole magic of the system. So I'm going to crank the cage of this to be super gigantic. You can see it's clipping through right there. But now I've captured this detail and everything's fine there. It looks like my samples aren't set high enough. Oh, I know what the problem is. It's because the on the low here, it's that same thing that we did before. It's because everything resets. See, the auto bake is set to quick, which you don't want. You want full. And we'll just adjust the minimum offset there. There we go. OK, cool. So basically, you can see how big the cage is and how far it's like clipping into the other thing. And see, now we don't have that problem. See, there's no wackiness going on there. So let's just quickly go into the other lows. Can I do all the low? No, you can't. So you have to do the low cages, I guess, all at once or one at a time. So give that guy low cage, that guy's low cage, and that guy's low cage some extra room. OK, and it's all quick loaded and baked. And then let's do our final fix that we're going to describe in a different tutorial just to make this thing look correctly. So I've painted all that stuff. I'm going to rebake. And there we go. So now we're going to zoom into our problem area that we had here before. And you can see it's perfect. See, there's no overlap. So I didn't actually have to move that mesh anywhere. If you move it out here, you can see that that thing is not overlapping on that thing. And oh, that's super annoying. The camera undoes. And that thing is not overlapping on that thing. And we fix all the overlap and everything looks awesome. And this is a fun little shape that we've made here. And so that is the end of the super long winded tutorial for how the name matching stuff works and how you can do it inside of Maya now in a couple clicks instead of having to name all your stuff manually or even partially manually using this tool. OK, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was I found kind of like a bug or it's just like something that's broken in Maya that's just like super annoying and I can't fix it. And I actually downloaded someone else's script because I thought they had fixed it. I purchased someone else's renaming script and they have the same problem, actually. In fact, their script had a couple other errors that my script didn't have. And so what that is, is that this used to be an increment and it used to be set to 1001. And I changed that to auto. And the reason that I did that is because the script would actually crash if I set it to 1001 and you had a group within a group. So it, this is super annoying. I'm going to show you what it is right now. So I'm going to select this stuff. I'm going to press Shift P to unparent it. I'm just going to delete this. We don't need any of this stuff anymore. Now I'm just demonstrating something. So I'm going to select this stuff, select all that. And I want the, the underscore increment to be 1001. So whatever, it's just going to be test. And I'm just going to go rename. And it's cool. We get perfect 1001 to 1010, and it's all numbered correctly. And then you can change this to be whatever you want. And everything is working like intended, except watch this. So I'm going to do this. And I let's just put this in a group. Press Control G to put it in a group. And now I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to rename it to 01. And I'm going to click Rename. And see, look what it does now. When it's inside a group, does the suffix and then it adds this silly like extra increment to the end and I have searched everywhere and I don't think this is fixable. I think Maya has hard coded this. I haven't been able to get around it. And like I said, I bought someone else's script who's a much more competent programmer than I am and his script has this same problem and other problems. So the reason that I auto set it or I set the default setting to auto is because auto works inside of groups. So if we rename it now, see, then you get the correct naming. So this is kind of a bug, and I don't think there's a fix for it. If I ever find a fix, I'll definitely update the tool. But right now, if you want to use these other increments, you have to unparent the object first, which I think is really silly. So if it's like that, you can just hit Shift P to unparent, or you can go whatever, edit, un, where is it, parent, unparent, shift P, yeah. And then you can rename it there. So see, then it works fine. And then you can just middle mouse drag it back into the group. But I thought that was a really annoying. And I thought people would be uh, a lot more uh, worse off if the script just crashed. So if you have a group, like if you have any of your stuff in a group, then you probably just want to leave it on auto. Uh, but if you don't mind just quickly unparenting it, 
from the group. Then you can set it to whatever you want, rename it, and then drag it back in. And like I said, this isn't anything to do with my tool. This is because they implemented this terrible naming tool up here. And whoever wrote that code did some weird thing that forces the added increment if it is in a group like this, which I think is terrible. So why would you ever want that? So I default it to auto. If you've already purchased the full script pack or the modeling pack, this will be a free update. So you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the modeling pack, or you can get it in the full script pack. So take your pick. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel wouldn't exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have an incredible day.